everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I'm here today with my husband, Ron. And uh, we have a fun project to show you. This quilt behind me actually stemmed and was inspired by a quilt that Ron made. So we're gonna show you his quilt first. And this is it right here. Now, every place we go, when I go traveling, we always go to fabric shops and Ron buys fabrics and it's always motorcycle or car related, something like that. And he bought this motorcycle fabric and he wanted to kind of iron them on like so that they were like coming up the front of the quilt. And he decided that he was gonna do a double jelly roll race. So this is a two and a half inch strip and this is a one and a half inch strip. So what he did was he sewed all of his red strips together with a black square in between them. And then he sewed all of the white squares together with a black square in between them. Then he sewed those two together and then he did the jelly roll race with that. And so we got the whole thing done and going and it finished about this much too long. Like it was like a runway quilt, like it went really long. And so we just cut that piece off to use for something else. And then he actually ironed these onto fusible heat and bond and, um, and then we, he just placed them on here, ironed them on, and then we just single stitched all the way around every single one. And I say we, but mostly this was him. As a matter of fact, I tried to cut one of those out. If you recall, we were sitting up watching television when we were cutting out motorcycles. And I said, let me help you. And I'm cutting them out. And I handed it to Ron and Ron goes, why don't you just let me cut these out, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, what is the matter with my motorcycle? And he's like, Jenny, wheels aren't square. <laughs> so, you know, he did his own cutting out and he did that. And actually the quilting pattern um, he chose as well, which is kind of fun. I don't know if you can see that up close, but it's, it's actual, um, let, let them focus in on that. It's actual, see this guy is on a motorcycle right here. Here's the wheel and, and uh, you can see the whole, the whole motorcycle motif that he's got going on here and he loves it. So originally what we wanted to do was remake this quilt for you and show you how to do it. And uh, this is our quilt back here. Thanks, Ron, thanks for your help, honey. Um, this is our quilt back here. And we, we looked for some fabric that we could cut out and you know put little things on there. Nothing actually, uh, you know, nothing was floating my boat. And all of a sudden I'm like, we have these cool shaped templates. We could do a lighter background and then do the colorful templates on it. And so that's what we did. So to make this quilt, what you're gonna need is one packet of two and a half inch strips. And we have used Silver Linings Essentials by Wilmington. And they're just gorgeous. You can see they're all different, but they're all just tone on tones and they're just really, really pretty. It makes a great background color. You're also going to need a roll of one and a half inch strips. Uh, for your second one, you're going to need your pop color and we've chosen this gray color and you're going to need three quarters of a yard for that. And that's going to include your little border out here. So we, we used our square, our pop color, brought it out into the border and the binding as well. The binding is three quarters of a yard on that. So um, you're also going to need a little bit of heat and bond, which we have here. And, uh, and you're going to need a pop color. And we've used this Wilmington Essentials and it's just all different colors of that. And you can use anything you want. You can use motorcycles, you could use flowers, you could, you know, depending upon who this quilt is for, you could really personalize it. So we also used our templates and these are our, um, our orange peel templates. And I just think this splash of fun color, I mean, I don't know, you can't really see it down here too much, but we started with the big ones on the bottom and then just ran them right up the side right here. And so it just, we added the small and the large ones to it so that it would just, you know, it had lots of texture and lots of movement to it. And I just think it looks really fun. Now, when we made runs, we did it the Jelly Roll Race style. We thought it would be easier to write a pattern um, to do it, teach that a little bit different way. Plus you wouldn't end up with having to cut off part of your quilt because his did come out really long. I always call those runway quilts. So to make this quilt, we decided to build it row by row. And what we did was we took our two and a half inch strip like this. And for each two and a half inch strip, you're gonna need a two and a half inch gray square. And so you're gonna cut your, take your gray yardage and cut two and a half inch strips. And you're gonna cut 24 of these gray squares. And then you're going to cut 24 of the one and a half by two and a half inch strips as well, because those are gonna go in our white strip, which is coming next. So what we did was we took our long strip, trimmed our selvages off and sewed a gray square to it like this. 
And then we just sewed it a quarter of an inch right down the side. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to line these up and we're just going to sew it right down the side. Now to get it the length we wanted, we needed to add another six and a half inch strip. So it can be any one of your strips here. And so you're just going to take some of those strips and you're going to cut them into six and a half pieces because you're going to need one piece for each row that we do. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing with the white strip like this. So here's our white strip and we're going to trim our selvage ends off like that. Just trim that off. And then we have already cut these little pieces right here. And so this is now two and a half by one and a half. And we're going to attach this to the end of this and add a six inch piece along to the end of this as well. So I'm going to put this little strip in here and sew a quarter of an inch right down the side. And then I'm going to add my six inch piece on the end. Now the reason we added this little six inch piece on the end is because we wanted to get it to, um, we were trying to match Ron's quilt and we wanted to make it that wide. And we also wanted you to be able to rotate these. So just like this, you see, if we did this, they're all going to end up the same. So what we ended up doing was looping these, sewing these together like this and just making a whole loop out of it. Let me make sure these are lined up. All right. So now we have a loop. And then what we did was we just cut it wherever we wanted to so that it would stagger back and forth. So let me show you how we did that. So just anywhere along your strip that you want to, you're going to make a cut. And now this is going to still be the exact same length as this one, but it's going to be staggered. These squares are going to end up in different places. Let's look at the quilt for a little reference. So see how these are just kind of all over the place here. It's just wherever you cut them. And then you're just going to start sewing your rows together. Now I have a piece over here that's done that has those on it. It's just a small piece, but you'll be able to see here. And so this is what I'm talking about. So as you start sewing them together, you're going to get this great quilt with all these different colors of grays with the white ones sewn in between. And they're going to be staggered all over because you've sewn them together as a loop and this, then just trimmed them where you wanted. At the end of the day, you're going to trim up these sides so they all match and they go. Now for our added on color pop, what we did was we took our templates, which are our orange peel templates right here. We, t we, have, we use the big one, the large uh, orange peel template. We also use the small orange peel template. At first, we just started with the large one, and then we just felt like it needed some more movement. And, uh, and this little mini one right here, you can get a whole bunch of those out of a charm pack. And, uh, and for the big one, you can just get one here in the middle. I have quite a few little ones here in my pile, so I'm going to go ahead and trim, cut some of the, um, the big charm pack ones. To do that, you're going to need some heat and bond, and I'll show you how I attached my heat and bond because I just actually laid my charms right over it like this. So I've got my heat and bond out here, and I decided on the colors I wanted. And so I'm just going to lay them right next to each other so that I don't get any, um, no adhesive will stick to my iron, we're hoping. And uh, so we'll just go like this, and I'll just do four of them for now. And I'm just going to kind of overlap them a little bit. Oh, we don't want another yellow. Let's see, how about a green? The green will be beautiful. All right, so now we're just going to kind of touch these, iron them on. And I'm being very careful not to get on that sticky part. That is not fun to clean and iron. All right. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this go so much faster because I'm going to cut this. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I get so much stuff up around me here, and you've got to be able to see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this back into fourths. I can probably actually fold it once I trim it. So I'm going to trim this off, and normally I would just cover this with charms. I would just cover the whole thing with charms and... Uh, 
and we would have lots and lots of these. So I'm just going to fold this like this, and then I'm going to fold it like this. And then I'm going to lay my template on here like this. Now there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, you can either cut this with your rotary cutter, or you can trace around it and cut it with scissors. We also have an awesome Sizzix die that you could use and just run them through the Sizzix machine. All of our templates are also made into dies. And just like this. All right, let me trim off this little end right here. They all moved before I could trim it. All right, there we go. Now, if you want to leave those whole and pointy, you can do that as well, too. So then, let me tell you how we did this, because this was actually really fun. Natalie helped with this, and um, she's really good at seeing how things go together. And so this was actually hanging on my design wall so that we could actually step back and take a look at it, because you've got to get, you know, you don't want too many of the same color in an area. You don't want, you know, you, want, you, you just want it mixed up and you want it fun. So we actually just pinned these on, and we started from the bottom like this and just kind of went out, made them up, you know, fanned them out like this. Then we started adding in these little ones over here. And I can see this, this would actually, oh, see now you don't want two oranges right there. We have so many pretty colors to choose from. You know, we want to go ahead and, and put some others on. And you just, you just, it's play by ear. You know, it's just fun. It's just trying things out and seeing what works and how did it go. Ours went, ours is almost all large down on the bottom down here. And then it comes and swoops up like this and it just has a little bit of a curve. And the curve we did with this, with these small ones so that it gives it this real kind of windblown look, almost like leaves, which makes me think this would be a really pretty fall quilt with leaves. So uh, it's just easy. We then actually, we took the pins out. We pinned everything on the board, took the pins out, took the paper off the back, which is super easy. You just roll it and it comes back. And when you see this, um, shiny side on your fabric, you know that the glue is on there. And then Natalie replaced it on there and she got the iron and touched it right away with the iron and ironed it right while it was on our wall. So uh, you have to make sure you have an iron proof wall if you can do that. Ours is, it has flannel on it, so it works really well. But she actually just ironed it while it was still on the wall so that we knew it would all work. We then went and did a tiny little, um, button stitch all the way around these. You could do a little zigzag. Ron did a straight stitch around his, but it's just such a great idea because it's, we've combined two different sti strips. Um, we still have the squares popping in between. Because of the different sizes, it gives it more dimension and texture. Then we've added this fun color to it, and it just really makes a fun quilt. So I hope you'll try this. I hope you have some fun. I'd love to see all the different things that you make and put on it. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Finish Line Quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.